the uh, World Health Organization representative, Dr. Liu Yunggo, the acting team leader and technical officer for human resources for health and health systems, Dr. Kan Hee Park, uh, staff from the Ministry of Health here, and friends from the region, the invited guests. First of all, welcome to Fiji. <coughs> I don't know how long you've been here, but I look at the program, you've already had a walk. I hope you all went for the walk. Yes. Any defaulters? Any defaulters here? Yes. Okay. Maybe we should make them walk during lunch. <laughs> but I'm very glad that you're able to come here to Fiji, into this uh, lovely hotel in Novotel, to have a very important program that you have in front of you. I'm privileged to be here at the Novotel Hotel in Lamy this morning to launch the capacity building workshop for vitalizing the Pacific Open Learning Health Network. Anything to do with education, or anything to do with training, or anything to do with enhancing the knowledge of people is something that's always very dear to my heart. That's also something that's very dear to the heart of the government that we have in Fiji, the Bainimarama government, the Fiji First Government. If there's one thing the government has invested a lot in, it is in education. In uh, Fiji now, government has invested to make sure that all education from primary and secondary is tuition free, where nobody pays school fees. We are now providing subsidies to make sure that not only is the school fee paid, but that the bus fare so that people can get to school is also paid. Not only that, government is making sure that sometimes people come to school but they don't have any food in their stomach. So at least for those in the first year of school, that they get some food when they come to school. These are some of the things that government. So there's a massive investment. We have now have a system in Fiji where anybody who gets a place in a university, they can get either a scholarship or loan to make sure they can make use of that opportunity. And the other area where there has been massive investment in education is that this part of education that is often forgotten, which is early childhood education, to make sure that the minds are prepared before they go into class one, so that, that, that there are centers prepared, that there are teachers prepared. So now in Fiji, there's an emphasis on making sure that everybody, all the teachers that have uh, early childhood education, instead of getting the very low pay that they used to get before, now government provides their pay, provided they meet basic requirements. So that's just an indication of some of the things, the focus that the government in Fiji has on education knowledge. That's why when you have a program like this, we're talking about education knowledge, it's something that I'm always glad to be a part of. We um, continue to continually strive to ensure that our people and staff benefit from the services, infrastructure, technologies, and policies already in place. To that end, it is essential to ensure continuous development so that our staff are well-equipped practically and theoretically. Thus, the topics being discussed in these next few days are very re relevant. As health issues evolve in the Pacific, we still face high rates of non-communicable diseases, a persisting communicable disease burden, as well as outbreaks and emergencies. It is imperative that we have the skills and we have the knowledge to address these challenges, and we can only do this by continually challenging ourselves to learn, to grow, and to do better. In the past, in-service training for our health workers was minimal and not adequately planned according to our health service needs. The landscape is now changing as disease burdens increase, population migration and lifestyles change, <coughs> technology advances, and specialization develops in the Pacific. The enactment of the Medical and Dental Practitioners Decree of 2010 and other health professionals registration decrees has made it compulsory for continuing professional development. And this has resulted in our organizational culture placing more value on lifelong learning. And I hope that's something that is becoming more prevalent all across the Pacific. The Pollen Program, a partnership between the World Health Organization, the Ministry of Health and Medical Services in Fiji, and other Pacific Island countries, has been growing in importance as a means of providing continual, continuing professional development for our health workers, who in turn provide a quality health service for our communities. Pollen was established in 2003 to address the need for health professionals in the South Pacific to access continuous professional development opportunities and to update health information. There are now more than 40 of these centers in 14 countries and areas. 
In terms of technology, Poland puts us in touch with relevant advances in health research happening globally through access to more than 1,000 self-paced courses in a range of areas from NCDs to infection prevention and control to psychosocial issues. We have a network of 25 internet-connected computer centers set up in divisional and subdivisional hospitals around our nation. In recent years, the utilization of this system has been increasing rapidly. And to build further on this success, the WHO has put together this capacity building workshop. And I note that the main objectives of this workshop are, first of all, to provide you with the updated knowledge and skills on pollen management. Secondly, to share best practice and challenges in pollen operations at the country level. And third, to discuss country pollen operational plans and targets for 2015 to 2016. Between 20, 2003 and 2012, 815 health workers used pollen to strengthen their skills and knowledge. Then, in 2013, with the introduction of licensing requirements, as well as increased advocacy by the pollen coordinator, this number jumped from 815 to 1,745 health workers registering to take their courses in an effort to improve their knowledge and skills. With 1,745 Fijian health workers signed up, this is almost half the establishment of the frontline <coughs> care workers in the Ministry of Health. I'm very pleased that that has happened, and I'm pleased to know that we have a workforce that is proactive, motivated, and has taken the initiative to independently improve their skills. So I think there's a, there's a continued focus not only for the pollen itself, to make sure that it's as useful as possible by making sure that people know how to use it, to learn from the best practices that you have, but it's increasingly very important. At the end of the day, the most, the most critical step in the health systems is the health worker himself. What the health worker knows, what the health worker can do, and what the health worker wants to do. Attitude, knowledge, and skill. Obviously, pollen is something that's going to be there that will help us in our knowledge and probably help us too in, our, um, in areas of skill. That is one of the most critical things that we have. The other part of this, this is where leadership comes in very importantly, is to make sure that you can generate that attitude where people in the workforce want to deliver good results. I think in all of our countries, we always have complaints about the attitude of workers. That is obviously not something that can be done by this program, which is online, but we'll have we need other systems to be able to do that. That is also one of the reasons that we in Fiji are pushing very strongly on the leadership skills of everybody in the health sector. We have a number of criteria now that we expect all leaders to do. We expect all leaders in the Ministry of Health in Fiji to be people that have a lot of energy. When you have a leader that has energy, you know what happens to that energy? It, it moves on to the workers. If you have a leader who is half dead, what happens? <laughs> everybody around them is half dead. So we expect leaders to have energy. When you have that, then you can have the knowledge and the skill and the attitude also. Not only that, we expect leaders to be energizers. Leaders that energize the people around them. That's very important for us. Third, we want leaders to have the edge, to be able to make the hard decisions when they need to be able to do it. Fourth, we want leaders that can deliver, that can execute results. And fifthly, to be able to empathize with people. So I'm very glad that we have this particular program. You're going to discuss it, you're going to share best practice, and at the end of the day, it will have a strong impact on your ability to enhance people's knowledge. And hopefully, through I'm not too sure how it impacts on skill, but through interaction with others in the workplace, it can also in, uh, enhance the skills that people have. The Pacific Island countries face unique challenges in terms of our small populations, our expensive and difficult travel routes and large expanse of oceans separating our islands and distancing us from each other. These challenges are the main reason why you as participants from the Pacific, including Fiji, must take this opportunity to strengthen the implementation and expansion of pollen for your own professional development, but most importantly, to make sure that our health workers can help the people that are here to serve, which is the populations of our country. With these words, I wish you all a fruitful and blessed workshop. Vinaka, God bless you all, and may you have a wonderful time.
during the course of this event. Now I